There you go, do a big cheesy smile. Pretend your dentist is watching. Little Mia is a pocket rocket and going through what most six-year-olds do. <gasps> Have you got a wobbly tooth? Show me. Who, despite her young age, just happens to be one of the gutsiest people I've ever met. OK, you lead the way. Oh, my gosh. Look at all the colours. This is fantastic. I know who lives here. It's Mia. So, what's on the shelf? What's your most precious thing on the shelf there? Life has dealt Mia the cruelest blow. You got this. But you'd never know it. Oh, it's a money box cat. That's very cool. There, that's the really cool dog. Oh, so you can check how many. Oh. You see, it, it spins. So, am I right in guessing that you love cats? Yes. Yes. I like this one here. Look, he's watching you. That one's very cute, isn't he? Describe her personality to me. Oh, determined. Yeah. You know, I think we've cheeky. seen that. Cheeky. Yeah, it's very cheeky. He loves a good laugh, loves a good joke. Um, she's really brave, you know, yeah. yeah. Um, Has Mel seen how high you can jump? You do it on your bed. Really? On here? All right, should I clear? Can I, should I step back? OK. <laughs> this looks like it's serious. <laughs> Look how tall she is. Wow. I can do that. I know, you're very clever. Just a year and a half ago, Mia was a happy, healthy girl. Where will you go now, Mia? Full of beans and just learning how to ride a bike. Which way are you going? Until one day, she came down with the flu and within hours was fighting for her life forcing her parents, Peter and Amy, to make the most agonising decision, to let doctors amputate all four of her limbs. What does she tell people happened? Uh, she, she has a pretty nice little quick story. Yeah. Um, I got sick and they had to cut my hands and feet off. This is my favourite coin. Do, 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 And I see the, the, the no legs. That's where his legs are supposed to be. Ah. There's no legs. She doesn't really talk about when I had hands and feet or she doesn't get upset about it. She's adapting and resilient and happy. Mm. and doesn't, doesn't ask why at the moment. So just live in this moment. <laughs> Peter and Amy never dreamt their world would look like this. They live an otherwise very normal life in Brisbane with Mia, her sister Ellie, who's eight. I love you so, 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 And their energetic little brother, Max, who's three. Max, we will have you know, ice cream later, OK? Amy and Peter are sharing their story because they want other parents to know that something that began with the flu can quickly become something much, much worse. Ice cream is already hard. It hurts to know that it, it could have been different mm. and it could have been, you know, like if, if she'd got antibiotics earlier, you know, she'd probably just be a normal kid right now. And it, it's the time between mm. you know, when you get sick and when you get diagnosed is so important. Um, and if she'd started treatment a day earlier, mm. you know, we wouldn't be talking to you. Australia is now in the midst of the second deadliest flu season on record. Already more than 130,000 cases reported and more than 230 deaths. But there is one complication that's alarming doctors. To fight the infection, the body releases chemicals into the immune system that in some people can lead to severe organ failure. It's called sepsis. And it's so lethal that you will almost certainly be dead if not treated within 24 hours. Sepsis is a life-threatening condition that occurs when your body's response to an infection damages your own organs and tissues it can result in death. 
There's sepsis is well controlled at the moment. Yes, sepsis is well and controlled at the moment. Antibiotic yeah, treatment. Antibody. Professor Simon Finfer is one of the world's leading experts on sepsis, and he's just made an alarming discovery. Sepsis is a staggering six times more widespread than previously reported. We can say confidently that there are 100,000 episodes of sepsis in Australia each year, and of those, at least 13,000 uh, will result in death. Uh, it's a very high figure. Does that shock you? Well, yes, it does. It's a considerably higher figure than we had thought was the case. Not all cases of sepsis are caused by the flu. You can also get it from something as simple as a cut. But these revised figures have rung alarm bells around Australia because, as in Mia's case, many doctors are missing the warning signs. The problem with sepsis is that the early signs are of something like the flu. And I think if you're a general practitioner, you have a very, very difficult job because the majority of people who come in who you diagnose with the flu will have the flu and will get better. Four, Mia Wilkinson was just like any other kindy kid. She loved playing fairies with big sister Ellie. She loved going shopping with mum, especially if a doll from Frozen might be on the cards. And she was a monkey on the obstacle course at the playground. You're crazy. All healthy? All of you, no one was ill? No. Never taken any of them to hospital. No. For anything. But then, one Friday afternoon in October 2017, Mia told her mum she had a sore tummy. And then about 5pm, she, she threw up. So, OK, looks like gastro. We've seen this before. Um, so let's, you know, not worry about dinner, put her to bed. So she threw up through that night, um, had a temperature. Yeah, she was um, rough that night. Yeah, she was rough, yeah. And so then Saturday morning, we're like, well, this, you know, she's not right. We'll, we'll, take, we'll take her to the doctor. Come on in. The doctor listened to her belly and said, oh, you know, it sounds like gastro, it sounds like diarrhoea is coming. See what we can hear. So that was Saturday morning. Just a bit of tummy trouble. Mia was sent home, but by Saturday afternoon, she was getting worse. She didn't respond, so she didn't seem to hear her name or couldn't look at me, um, wasn't comprehending. Now worried, Amy took her straight to emergency at the hospital. They checked her over and diagnosed her with influenza B and viral myositis, which is inflammation of the muscles. You know, it looks like those, go home and rest. You know your daughter better than anybody, and you knew that she was really sick. Yeah. But the hospital is saying to you, it's OK, mm. be home, mm. rest. Yeah. It's nothing yeah. to worry yeah, about. Yeah, we've seen a lot of flu this, this year. Um, go home and rest. Yeah, so that's the, that's the treatment, I guess. We sort of thought that's, that's what you'd do, yeah. We had this gut feeling, should have we been louder? But we're not, you yeah. know, really pushy people. It's now Sunday evening and Amy is in the kitchen cooking dinner. But something makes her stop. Mia has been in bed all day, lethargic, not eating or drinking. So Amy goes in to check on her daughter. She pulls back the covers and for the first time notices a light purple rash on her legs. I said, I'm taking her back to hospital. I've said to people, I said, if she wore leggings, I wouldn't have seen it. I would have put her to bed. She shares a room with Ellie. I saw the rash and I took her in. And I think a nurse walked past. She's like, you know, beckoned me through to go straight through. You get there and it, it was very obvious that it was serious, straight oh. away. You know, there's doctors everywhere, there's nurses everywhere. And Mia's, Mia's crying out because yeah. she's in pain. Yeah, there's, there's, there's nothing that, that, that we can do. Mia 
Sonia Wilkinson was a happy, healthy four-year-old. Yay! Good job! Then one day went down with what seemed to be the flu. An illness that overnight turned into a deadly complication called sepsis. He was sicker than we'd ever seen her. But she went in with the flu, mm. like the flu. She had influenza A, influenza B, RSV, which is another virus, invasive strep A bacterial infection, which resulted in sepsis. So, you know. Mia's body is fighting her infection by releasing chemicals that instead of helping her, are killing her. She desperately needs help breathing and is put on a ventilator machine known as intubation. Her lungs started struggling because the organs are shutting down. All of them. So her lungs are struggling, so they're like, okay, we need to intubate her. So to do that, you know, it's not a nice procedure, you know, mm. just, you know, you guys might want to just, just go get it. They're all, just step out, go get a cup of tea. and say, like, okay, you know, so we're going to go with a cup of tea. And then we were walking back and, you know, I hear them yelling out, we're losing her. <laughs> the heart stopped. And we get to that, I, I yelled at Pete, Peter, we're losing her. <laughs> so we're both standing there and then we got the big machine, I don't know what it's called, on a heart, humping. <laughs> pumping to, to bring her back. And we're so lucky she came back. <laughs> we're so close. Against all the odds, Mia is still alive, but is far from out of danger. She was very ill, she was on multiple organ support, um, and we we're not sure if she would survive. She had what we call septic shock. So when sepsis is so strong that the heart actually struggles to pump enough blood to the different organs. Dr. Lorraine Schlappbach is a sepsis specialist in the Queensland Children's Hospital. Most children we see with sepsis, they're less than five years of age. Every day, he sees the devastating effects of sepsis on patients like this little boy. And when Mia was rushed into the paediatric intensive care unit, he knew immediately it would be touch and go. So it was sort of 36 to 40 hours into her being in ICU and very sick that we realised that she may be at risk of losing some of the limbs and we were still not sure at that stage if she, if she would survive, yeah. Mia's blood pressure is critically low. She's on medication to keep it high enough to support her brain and vital organs. We thought, yeah, maybe she'd be okay. Mm. But the blood is not getting through to her limbs. But then, started with her fingertips. Mm. Yeah, I just, I don't you know, it went dark and then it just went black. Oh. And it just crept up, it crept up and uh, it, I can't describe it. Mm. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, it was so hopeful. And then it just went away. Mm. Yeah. Do you see it? Like, what did her hands look like? Yeah, it's, it started great. I mean, that. Oh, I mean, they, they, they turned something like a horror movie. Mm. You know, like, uh, just black claws. Mm. Amy and Peter were faced with a decision no parent should have to make. I don't remember the conversation of when the doctor came in, you know, who first said, you know, we'll need to amputate. I think we, we just knew, I mm. guess, you know, like we had, yeah, we just, you just know that that's where, where you're going. Do you remember 
the moment in time where you had to give consent? Oh, I thought you'd ask a different question. I remember the time we had to tell her. Because <laughs> we're not going to not tell her. You can't send a child in and not tell her they're going to have their arms amputated. Because they've been wrapped up. Like, they were initially, you could see them, but then obviously as they're black, getting blacker and blacker and dying, they, they wrapped them up so you couldn't see them. I don't remember when, date or anything, but saying, you know, they can't save your hands and feet. I can't make them better. And she's, she's sad. I don't want them to take my hands. And she's like, how will I play with Ellie? Mm. Isn't she? Yeah. And he said, we'll find new ways. Yeah. Just a few weeks after being admitted to hospital, Mia had both arms amputated below the elbow. Trees in all the world. Yeah, she was just in the bed and she just started crying. Mm. Uh, so, you know, what's, what's wrong? Um, and uh, she just said, you know, I, I didn't want them to take my hands. Mm. She said, yeah, I know. And I didn't want them to take, no. I didn't want them to take your hands either. But yeah, I said, you know, we'll, we'll get you some new hands. Mm. They won't be the same, but it's, um, yeah, we'll, we'll work it out. Hello. Hey, Mia. Welcome home, little girl. Hey, it is good to see you. I've got a chair set up for you. Amy and Peter were allowed to take their daughter home for just a few days before the next inevitable surgery. Just like in Mia's arms, the sepsis had caused irreparable damage to the blood vessels in her legs. Yeah, so we a chair, we can kick it back a bit. Causing the tissue to die. So we took her home, we could have Christmas at home. Which was good but hard. Yeah. Christmas shouldn't be like that. <laughs> it is good to see you, my girl. Is it good to be home, darling? Yeah. Home for the day. So then she went back in for her leg, leg amputation surgery on the yeah, 3rd of January. <laughs> Me and with the social worker just mucking around and laughing and smiling and... I guess the, the blissful, un, you know, unaware as a child can be. Don't break, don't confess into the I think we're also no, not not glad, but you know, it's the start. Okay, well, these are dead. Remove them, and she can start healing. We can start moving towards, you know, her moving in prosthetic legs and just just healing and just being healthy. Look at you. These are clever clogs. Now, we're looking for some Monday morning, is that right? For Mia Wilkinson, what began as a flu quickly developed into a life-threatening medical emergency called sepsis. It killed the tissue in her limbs First, her arms, and now her legs have been amputated. I want, I want you to say Elsa. Say Elsa. Elsa. How did she react when she came out of surgery and she... Oh, pain. She's in pain. So much pain. Mm. And I remember her biting her lip all night. You, we're, you know, she's in pain. She holds it in pretty, really amazing, though. She does. She's... She's tough. She's so tough. She's so tough. What's a pirate's favourite letter? Ow. Arr. <laughs> and you still Amazing. have her? Yeah. Does Mia remember when she had hands? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah, I asked her the other day and, and 
she she remembers a couple of instances, I think, where she had them, but um, I think mostly she's just, yeah, like lost it, she's moved on. All right, you can try. One thing you learn very quickly about Mia is that she is utterly determined to do everything for herself. Going to move it on a different shelf. There's plenty of room there. OK, do you want me to help you? No. Count how many times in this story she refuses help. Do you want me to put that one back? Got it? No? OK. She's amazing. Mm. And what lets us get through it is seeing her, mm. her be OK. I'd be happy. Yeah, like if, if, if she wasn't OK, I don't think we'd survive, but she is. And, and yeah, it is. It's a, you, you, to hear that laughter, to see that smile, and we're so lucky to still still have that. Very helpful. Can I put it in? Yes, darling. Put, put the... See, that says negative. You've got to put the... Pot, yeah, that in, that in. If there is any limit on what Mia can do, she hasn't found it yet. Mia, what's your comic code? Buzz, Buzzy the buzzing bee. Right now, I'm going to make it look like he's bumping into a tree. She's learned how to draw and write with no hands and how to walk on artificial legs. I don't know. We've got the right side. That is always the question. So these legs are held on by gripping the side of her knee. OK. Um, so that's how they're sort of suspended on. So they don't come <laughs> off, because that is not what you want to happen. And if, I, if it works up, I will fall down. You would. You would. You would go bang, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, look at you. You would. And there you go. Woo. And that's how we do it. A little parade. Sarah's dancing on your tiptoes. There you go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good job. Yay! You're very fast. Take a bow. Well done. Well done. Oh, you went to take a bow. Good job. That was awesome dancing. At that age, yeah. you know, kids, they don't know enough to know that things can be different. They mm. just, this is what there is and they deal with that. Mm. But she's getting close to that age where I think she's going to look around, she's going to see the, mm. the other kids. And, and she's going to say, why? Mm. Why this happened to me? You know, mm. what? And, you know, we worry. Mm. We worry about that time. Yeah. But for the moment, everything is OK. When Mia returned to school, her classmates were there with plenty of encouragement. Like that. Ten steps, or do a ten thing a thing. One of the things we've been amazed and, and pleasantly surprised by is, you know, other kids, kids ask. Mm. Um, and you know, Mia would, you know, she'd say, yeah, you know, I, I got really sick and I had to chop off my hands and my feet. Mm. And kids, they'll hear that mm. and then they sort of go, OK. <laughs> and, and then they just play. And then life came, come out. Yeah. It's really nice to see, yeah. you know, they're kids and they just, yep, this is how oh. it is, and, and then <laughs> it's all okay. Are you like, you want help or are you okay? Nope, she's okay. Every day there's a new challenge and every day Mia is up for it. She said her favourite sport is swimming. Oh. Does that give her a beautiful freedom in the water? Well done. I think just that being able to move freely with nothing on and, I don't know, it just must feel amazing. Yeah, you were saying you got something to show me? Go. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you want to do it again? Go this way. She can sort of swim. She'll swim and then she'll turn over and float to catch your breath and then she'll swim a bit, or then she'll just stick her head up and, and get a breath <gasps> and a bit of water, probably. Ready? Let's go. And we've modified some flippers for her with an old sort of silicon liner. Again, finding another tool that will help. Mm. And she put them on. Oh, she loved it. It's yeah. so good. Go ahead. Or do you want to do it yourself? On dry land, Mia is adapting well to her prosthetic legs. But she's a kid and wants to run and play. What do you think? You want to pop it in? 
So today, she's being fitted for running blades. It's not easy. Her stumps are hurting, but she pushes on. I thought, this is never gonna, she's never gonna be able to walk out. How is she ever gonna do this? But then she does. And so I think I've just gotta believe. You're amazing. Sometimes it all gets a bit too much, and even superheroes need to take a few moments out. I know. that noisy? <laughs> and then pop this leg out. Is it soft? Might make it feel a bit better, hey? I like this. You like end. it like that? It's like yeah. having thick socks. Mm. Hey. Should we walk together? Nice and tall. Why are our feet pointing inwards? Mia, what are we doing? That's it. I'm, I'm hoping, hoping a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's early days yet. Why do I have a look at them? Oh, no, don't look at your bum. <laughs> oh, you look... <laughs> but just, you know, I, I, have a, I have a dream of just watching her running oh. in the playground with the other kids. And that day is going to be magical. I'm, oh. I, I believe it will come. <gasps> Am I going to get you? Where'd you go? Where'd you go, Mia? <gasps> there you are! All right, I'm going to get you now. I'm going to get you. Do you want to Mia Wilkinson has guts and lots of friends. She's still wobbly on her new running blades, but determined to show them to her first grade classmates. Hi, Mia. Thank you. Hi, Mia. Hi, new legs you've got. Can you go really fast? Show us how fast you can go. Oh. Her classmates encourage her to try again. On your marks. Get set. Go. If there's one piece of advice Peter and Amy want every parent to take away from their story, it's this. If your child is the sickest that you've ever seen them, tell that to the doctor that you mm. speak to. Make mm. them understand how serious you think it is. Mm. And uh, yeah, get vaccinated. It's, mm. you, know, you, don't, you don't want this. Mm. Get um, the flu shot. Get yeah. the flu shot. Because she had three viruses and a bacterial mm. inf infection. You know, what, if, what if she'd just had one strain of influenza. Yeah. yeah. It could have been could have been different. Mm. So yeah, I think mm. yeah, go do it. In Australia we see every year over five hundred children that need intensive care life support because of sepsis. And over fifty children a year die. So that's more than children dying of road traffic accidents. Sepsis is a really big problem and we can do something about it. We can try and recognise it earlier, and we can try and treat it earlier and better. Amy and Peter are realistic. They know there's a hard road ahead. What would be the biggest challenge that you guys are facing right now? Oh, I think it's, it's just... Oh. Like it's just, it, there, there is just fear of the future. It's just mm. what what does it hold? What what will she be able to do? And yeah, how, how are things going to work? You know, we're, we're like every parent out there. We just want our kids to you know, be happy, yeah. smile. Well, she has the most amazing, gorgeous smile I think I've ever seen, <laughs> and the most infectiously happy gorgeous attitude. Yeah. She's just phenomenal. Yeah, she's, she, thank you. Yeah. You're proud of her? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Super yeah. proud. Super proud. You two forgot your T-shirts today. I think I always feel sad. I think you just always will. But then, you know, pride is huge. <laughs> it's such a, you can feel it. You can mm. always feel like it could, how can't other people, you know, I can, mm. it's tangible almost. Yeah. Oh, they're both of them, Superman. Hold it. <laughs> Two, three, four, seven. I don't want you to hold. Yep, you do it, you do it. Next time you're tempted to feel sorry for yourself, take a dose of tonic called Mia. Nice and tall. Five. Do you want to 
you reckon you're going to be able to run faster than all the boys? Yeah, faster than all of the boys. Good. Are you sneaking up on Nana? Ah. Thank you for letting me come into your bedroom. It's a very lovely bedroom. Thanks, Mum. Thanks, darling. And bye.